been eating too much cheese, not enough beetroot. If you do this and you do it properly, you'll actually get a better quality client, by the way. I don't mean just post your lunch. Don't just post your lunch, right? You need to do a better job of engaging with your followers. By our nature, humans are nosy. We want to see what people are doing. We want to see what their lives are like. In this video, we are going to tell you how to get clients from your Instagram stories. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly Bicep and Banter, and we're just here to help you. I've stumbled on that twice today. Oh. We're here to help you today build your. Oh, I've completely wow. ruined it. That's twice now. We're here to help you with your online it's fitness, fitness business man. in any way that we can. It's been a long, it's been well, a long been week. Doing this it's been a long week, and it's only Tuesday. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're here to help you with that. But nice. today we're going to talk about Instagram stories and why developing relationships through Instagram stories is the key to having long term clients stay with you pay you loads of money rather than chasing people in the cold DMs, sending them shitty messages and not focus on building relationships whatsoever. Again, it's one of those things that um, actually requires a little bit of effort, shock horror um, and time and consistency. And no guarantees, that's why uh, coaches don't like it. Yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where I think most coaches focus on trying to get total followers in. The amount of coaches that... <sighs> I have with a, a good amount of followers, five, six thousand, seven thousand, really good amount of followers, 10 clients. Oh, I think I need more followers. But honestly, if you've got five or six thousand followers, you don't need more followers to get clients. What you need to do is you need to do a better job of engaging with your followers. So if you take that, um, if you take that ratio, let's just say you get 10 clients, you've got 5,000 followers. Well, does that mean that you need 10,000 followers to get to 20 clients then? It's just... The math doesn't math. Yeah, you do the math. Yeah. Um, so, and we know that. Um, that's a spoof video. So, yeah, look, it's um, it's usually an audience connection problem that nine times out of 10 that we'll see. Certainly with our clients now that are maybe... Um, the, the, the type of client that we tend to work with now one-to-one -one, typically already has some online clients um, and they've, they, they, might, they might have got a couple of thousand followers um, to begin with. Again, not nothing nothing major, nothing, you know, it's not like hundreds of thousands, but a couple of thousand followers. The chances are it's more than likely audience connection problem that, that that's going on. Yet people don't focus on the audience connection. It's almost like the same video that we did um, at the beginning of today where it was like the leads are there in front of you. Instead of actually focusing on your current followers, people try to focus on getting new followers. Whereas what you should be doing is you should be using your stories. So out of that 5,000 followers, you should be trying to engage as many of that 5,000 by using the behind the scenes of your life, of your business, of your opinions in your stories so that instead of getting the 100, 200 views that you're currently getting, that actually you're getting four, 500, 600 views out of that four or 5,000 followers, 700 views. Like building that up so that you've actually got more sets of eyes that are looking at what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But instead, people are happy to keep that number down at 100, 200, but focus on the going from 5,000 to 6,000 to 7,000. Mm -hmm. But the actual sets of eyes on, on what you're doing is still low. Yeah. It's the wrong thing. And one of the biggest ways you can change that is by sharing more of your life on your on your Instagram stories and, and being a little bit more engaging with those people who who are already following you and make it more interesting. So the sort of the, the example that I use with this is like imagine that you're into football um, and you follow Cristiano Ronaldo. Right. And let's say that on his stories he's just reposting reels that he's been tagged in of him scoring goals. Would you watch them? Would you go for it? And probably not. Like you skip past a few, you might watch one or two, you skip past most of them, right? Whereas if you follow Cristiano Ronaldo and he did like a house tour and he did a, this is what I'm watching on TV and this is what I'm eating for dinner, this is what I'm eating for lunch, this is what my kids are doing with the missus, this is what my garden looks like, this is where I'm eating out today, this is the car I'm in, you know, those sorts of things. Would you watch that more every single day? 100% you would. 100% you would because by, by our nature, humans are nosy. We want to see what people are doing. We want to see what their lives are like. Now, I use that example obviously a bit extreme in terms of Cristiano Ronaldo, but my point is that he doesn't just post videos on his Instagram. He shouldn't just post videos on his Instagram of him scoring goals. We, we know he does that. We want to see the stuff that we don't know about him. We want to see those behind the scenes parts, right? And he doesn't share it, obviously, because he doesn't fucking need to. But as an online coach, you need to understand that you would build a better connection with Cristiano Ronaldo and, and what you think you know about him and his life better than if you were just watching videos of him scoring goals. I bring this up regularly about like behind the scenes football documentaries. They work really, really, really well to build a better connection with their fans because you get to know the person behind the footballer. And what you've got to remember is that when someone starts following you, they know you're an online coach. 
They know you're into fitness. They know you can get results, hopefully, from looking at your page. They don't need to see more of that. They need to see more of the things that are going to connect with you and go, this is my type of person. I love the fact they do this with their food. I love the fact they do this with their family, whatever it is. And they're more likely to talk to you about those things than about fitness. Yeah. The um, the common, um, what is it, speed bump. The common speed bump that we tend to get back from coaches is, oh, yeah, but I just don't do anything all day. My life's boring. So is everybody else's. Yeah. Everybody thinks their life's boring because they're living it. They're the one that does it every day. But you realise that people aren't seeing what you do every day so that they don't know, do they? So even if you're sat at a desk, somebody's still more interested in what you've got for lunch at your desk or what's going on in terms of your work or what you're drinking or your opinion on something. Somebody's more interested in that than seeing a, a reshare of your client take a selfie of themselves in the mirror saying, I feel great. Yeah, or their trainer eyes. Or their trainer eyes. Trainer eyes PB. Think about it like that. And again, in that Cristiano Ronaldo thing, it's like, imagine if Ronaldo's stories were just people that had tagged Ronaldo in something and he was just resharing them. You, you don't give a fuck about who these randoms are. I'm here to follow Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So the common um, objection that we get is, oh, I just don't do anything. Well, well nor do we. But yet we still manage to be able to get four, five, six stories up that are somewhat um, engaging. Um, and I want to talk about a little thing that I did last week where off the back of, um, I made like three stories, right? One of them was a little uh, dig at a mentor. The second story was me with a false nose on. And then the third story was just a caption of something current affairs wise. It was, um, fool me once on Netflix, fooled me eight times into watching every episode. It was garbage, right? Just three, um, don't take a photo. Example. So, you know, yeah. um, so just three slides basically. And it involved passion of me ranting about the mentor. It involved humor of me sat with a fake nose on, all in my office chair. And then the next one was some current affairs, right? That somebody might have an opinion on. And I got 70 odd responses to those three stories alone, seven zero. Now, if I'd have made the exact same three stories three years ago, I probably wouldn't have got 70 responses. I might've got 30, let's say. If I'd have made the exact same three stories five years ago, I might've got... 15 say my point being is that because of the work that we've done on our stories and on our content that's what's led itself to that i can put up three stories and get 70 responses now because they feel comfortable to reach out to me and go as if you didn't like fool me once an hour of Mich michelle keegan are you a twat or whatever right that they feel comfortable that they know me well enough or they've spoke to me a few times that they feel like they can then have a little laugh and a joke which is really powerful when it comes to selling a personal brand is that somebody will reach out and give me their mentor story because they trust me that i'm the person that they can probably open up to with Mike, I've been ripped off as well with this or with that or the other, or I got told this. If I didn't come across as relatable and I never showed my personality or I never showed my stories or I never showed behind the scenes or I never showed my opinions, I'd get that less, wouldn't I? So I would have had less responses. So all of the people that kind of go at the minute, oh yeah, nobody really responds to my stories. Well, keep doing it keep practicing, keep getting better, keep showing personality, keep showing behind the scenes, keep showing opinion, and you'll get one or two responses. And in six months' time, it might be seven or eight. And then in a year's time, it might be 15 or 20. And it will grow and it will grow and it will grow, but it won't grow until you start doing the right things now. And the problem with it, like, I just took that picture there of you um, doing a podcast and the problem that people have with it is that they don't put any opinion in it as well. They don't, they don't give people a reason to reply, right? So I could have just taken a picture there of, of Mike and just said, oh, podcast filming. But the other week we did it and it was a bit of a joke that you, I think your head was down and just with the glasses on and your black top, you look like Steve Jobs. It was literally the only reason. It doesn't look like Steve Jobs at all. <laughs> but, but, I, but, but I just posted that then with the podcast and I'm like, I put out with Steve Jobs again. Because I know that coaches are going to reply to that more than if I just put out a podcast, do you not, like, it, again, it's those little things of like, for example, you could, you could have scrambled eggs on toast in the morning and you put them out and you go, if you like, if you don't like scrambled eggs, you're a nonce. 
right? Funny joke, something like that. Again, make it personal branding. You don't have to call people nonsense if you don't want to, but you get my point is you can say things that are going to, I call it like baiting engagement, but it's not really baiting engagement. It's just putting an opinion on a piece of uh, a piece of content, right? Just posting a photo that, again, I make a, I made a joke now. I think that's three times I made the Steve Jobs joke, right? So other people are going to go, oh yeah, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, no, he doesn't like Steve Jobs. He just did once. But I made a joke about it the first time. They go, oh, he did in that picture. But I get the same coaches that messaged me that first time, messaged me now, they're going to put a laughing emoji on it. Mike does it with my bald head all the time. Out for out for breakfast or whatever. I made the joke about Mike ignoring me on his phone all the time. It's putting a, something in your story that's going to make someone think or respond or reply rather than just, uh, here's my food. I don't mean just post your lunch. Don't just post your lunch, right? Say something like, if you're eating, I don't know, fucking beetroot with your lunch. Why would you be eating beetroot with lunch, right? Fuck knows. If you don't like beetroot, then are you even are you even an adult? I don't I don't know, right? My point is you're gonna get someone reply to it if you just put up the story. Beetroot, the best part the best part of the lunch. Yeah. Like and people go, oh, beetroot. Beetroot, you must don't be joking. Beetroot. Best part of that. You've got you've got you've got cheese on that. Like okay. Cheers, mate. But like Mike said, it's breaking down that barrier of that first conversation. We all know, to go back to the whole Tinder analogy that we use all the time, the first step, the first thing is the hardest bit. The icebreaker is the hardest bit. For a lot of people who want to sign up for your coaching, the hardest bit is making that first port of point of contact and going, oh, what's the, what's the, how do I do this? Well, that's the really easy way. So that when it comes to coaching, it's much easier for them to just go, oh, hey, by the way, have you got any coaching spots? Because I'm, I'm feeling a bit shy. I've been eating too much cheese, not enough beetroot, um, right? Is that you can make these, these opinionated stories and people will reply to them. It's not necessarily about when we say post your day, we don't just mean post your day as in like the literal parts of it, mm. although it will help. It's it's then taking it a step further and going, this is my opinion on this. This is why, like, you can do it like cold winter morning. These are the best best mornings. I love it when it's cold and crisp. Great. Someone's going to reply to that probably. Oh, I love this about it. What do you love about it? What is again, the good thing about it? Just, just those thoughts, random thoughts and feelings you have on a daily basis. Just put them, just write them in and just put them as part of your story. And, and you'll be amazed how many people reply. And you can do the same things over and over again. Like Dan said, he's made three or four jokes about Steve Jobs. He's made three or four jokes about um, me ignoring him at breakfast. I've made three or four jokes about me arranging my eggs and my, my salmon in place so it looks like a face and going, oh, I mate. It's the same thing. But when it is the same thing, people then get involved with the joke mm -hmm. because then you'll get people that go, oh, I mate, he's probably got people that go, he doesn't like Steve Jobs or fucking, you know, with his hair like that, whatever, or those glasses or whatever. It's, this, it's the same thing. So like with you, you could do not another cold shower every single morning. It doesn't mean it's going to get old. It just means that people are going to cotton on to the fact that you're not having a cold shower and that they will align values with you seeing other people have cold showers. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't have to be different. I think people think that it has to be different. And they we know really overthink it, don't they? They, yeah. just, they just overthink it so much. Like, oh, it's not funny or it's not. It's like, it doesn't need to be necessarily hilarious. No. It just needs to be something different. It's not hilarious. Like, nothing is hilarious. It's just, it, it's something for somebody to latch onto as a response. It's just something. And it's something that shows a little shred of your personality. N not, not me in a cold shower again. Like, just that every day just shows that you probably don't have cold showers, which then separates you from everybody that has a cold shower. So then somebody else might have an opinion on that. It's just that. It's not particularly funny. It just is what it is. It's, for example, I've started to mention that I wear Louis Vuitton perfume, like aftershave, manly. Um, it's not perfume. Definitely aftershave. Yeah, it's not perfume. It's not perfume. Um, <laughs> like I can just, if I wanted to, I could just keep doing that and going, it's the best, best aftershave, best aftershave, best aftershave. Like, and someone I, will go, no, it's not. Yeah, I wear, <laughs> this, I wear this because I'm rich. I wear this because I don't mind spraying 300 pounds all over myself. Like, just a little tongue-in-cheek joke, right? But you'll probably get people that kind of know what aftershave I wear and maybe have a conversation. Is it nice? I'm going to smell it. Like, which I've already had, by the way. I already had somebody reach out and go, oh, you wear this, I wear that as well. Like, it was like, um, he actually just signed up and he was like, I knew you were the, the mentor for me. Like, yeah, just from the aftershave that I wear. And literally, they, they, they say that kind of like tongue in cheek as a joke, like don't they? Like, oh, you need the mentor for me, but it's like, no, no, that probably is a part of it. Like, there will be a part of it, not all of it, but there's a part of it that's made them go, actually, yeah, actually, yeah, like you know, because it's a connection, it's a common. That's that, that's the biggest thing with it. It's just building those connections, but also as well, like going onto a more, uh, I suppose, a more not serious point, but certainly a more sort of like tactical thing is that the more people that engage with your DMs in on your stories, the more likely they are to see your content as well. By the way. Because of the way the algorithm works, those people, I don't know if you ever noticed this, but if you ever DM someone, you're not DM for a little while and they're a creator, DM them and then you'll start seeing more of their content on your feed. You reload it and it starts coming up again. 
Because Instagram knows what you're doing. They know that these connections are happening. They know you're not sending cold DMs. They know that people are reaching out to respond to your DMs and your stories. They know that people are watching them. They're going to show your content to more people off the back end of that. And this is the whole cycle that we go through all the time is that with what we know about how to boost someone's Instagram stories, we know, we know that we can then help them with their content because their content Around gets the seen by more people. Their, their reach improves to their followers. Their followers start seeing more of their posts because people always moan, oh my, oh, my reach is only getting to my followers. Good. Good. Like, why are you trying to reach non-followers? You're trying to connect with the current ones that follow you and watch your shit all the time. They're the ones we want to connect with. People are so obsessed with reaching non-followers and Instagram's not showing my content to anyone. Well, no, not anyone new, but we don't need anyone new. You've got 5,000 followers and you've got 10 clients. Let's focus on them first. Like, we don't need non-followers. It's making sure that when you start improving your stories, improving that side of stuff and improving those relationships, your social proof, your more valuable posts, shall we say, just because there's no other real word for it, even though they shouldn't be valuable, your more opinionated posts, let's say, and your funny videos will start getting shown to them more. What do you think that's going to build over time? No like and trust. So when they are ready, they'll reach out to you. People think that when we say this stuff, it's just that, oh, you know, we say think about long-term, think about this stuff. It's all done for a reason. We're not stupid. Like we've seen this happen over time. We know that when someone changes these strategies within our business, within working with us, we know that in three months time, it all pays off. People aren't ready. They're not ready to do the work in, in two weeks. Like, oh, in two weeks, I'm going to wait my clients in two weeks. Well, no, it takes longer than that. We see it time and time again, around that three month mark, isn't it? around that time, mm -hmm. you just start seeing things just like that because it takes a little bit of time for this stuff to work. That's the beauty of building relationships over time is that those people come in after the fact, three, four, five months down the line. People, coaches are just too busy expecting their stories to work instantly. And why is no one reaching out? No one's reaching out because no one likes your shit yet. You've got to give them time to watch this stuff, to build up those jokes, to build up those in-jokes, build up the, 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 the no like and trust and relationship to then feel comfortable to reach out to you. That's the biggest thing. It's a comfort thing of going, I like this person. They're a real person. They're just like me, right? Rather than being put on a pedestal because everyone thinks that someone in fitness is like, oh, it's easy for them. They live this super, super easy life where everything's made for them. They go to the gym all the time. They got really, show them that it's not. You'd be more relatable. Yeah, but I prefer clients now, so... So. Yeah, I need, I need five clients in now. So what yeah. can I do? Well, yeah, don't do all that shit. The, if you do this and you do it properly, you'll actually get a better quality client, by the way. Also as um, well. And they'll they stay for longer. So you need less new clients. Yeah. So you, you, you'll you take the stress off your lead gen if you just put time and effort into just showing a little bit more behind the scenes opinion, making it actually worthwhile watching. And again, a, a good rule of thumb is, would you watch your own stories? And if you can sit there and, and answer this and go, no, you kind of go, that tells you everything that you need to know. You're, you're missing out on probably the most valuable tool on Instagram, I would say. Um, it's wicked that you're spending all your time on your on your feed posts, but actually your engagement is just so, so low on your on your stories that maybe just evenly dis distribute that slightly slightly better. Um, and also, I think some of the problem there is that when you say, would you watch your own stories, a lot of coaches can't dissociate themselves from their own content and they can't dissociate themselves from that. They go, yeah, I think uh, the coaches, clients are going to want to see that. Potential clients are going to want to see someone hitting a PB. No, they're not, number one. So I would say to you... That's your, that's your job though, isn't it? Yeah, I would say to you, would you watch our stories if we reshared a reel from a client saying, just signed up a new client? Would you watch our stories if it was four or five of those? you wouldn't. So when Mike says that, it's, it's hard sometimes to associate yourself from your own shit, like to look at it and go, oh yeah, no, actually, I think I need to see it. And, and again, it comes back to something we talked about in the last video we just filmed, which is that people, coaches just go, oh, that'll do. They put up, oh, that'll do. I posted something on my story. It's not good enough anymore. It's just not good enough to just go, oh, that'll do. I posted something. I'd rather you post nothing than that. It's, it's that useless. Start thinking like that. Start thinking about what content you watch on Instagram that you digest in the stories. What ones do you interact with? And you'll find they're almost always stuff that we've just mentioned. There you go. If you liked it, um, fucking tell someone about it. Yeah. Um, subscribe yeah. as well. Yeah, subscribe and, and all that stuff. Just to boost our ego. We don't do it. Nothing happens no. other than just our egos get boosted, which we need. So. Stephen Bartlett says the more subscribers he gets, the better guests he has on, which is derogatory to his current guests. Um, if you ask me but we're not going to get any guests on so you know nothing will happen if you subscribe other than you know it might just be nice to do that for us there you go makes us feel good